Okay, so guys, who knows about Henry Ford? Who knows about Henry Ford? Please raise your hands. Okay, I, oh, of course, obviously, right? It's like Captain Obvious question. Um, what is he famous about, Jan, for example? Um, he's famous about a model of producing um, cars. I don't know exactly what Yes, yes, that's very specific, yes. Uh, first, mass-produced cars. He also had... Uh, well, see, he, he still has, he's not alive, but he has hospitals, 20, I think, in USA. Uh, and the thing is that he was very good organizing people. Um, and what he did with cars is just a symptom of his organizational skills. And um, one of the things about Henry Ford were, uh, were the methods he used, well, not yet, the methods he used uh, within, his, within his company. And we're going to talk about... Um, about a legend. This is not like a 100% true story, but it's a legend of uh, one of his, uh, uh, his methods. So basically, the story goes like, um, he uh, made a surprise meeting for, uh, for the uh, directors of, uh, of every department he had. And in this surprise meeting, round table, he told them, guys, you're going uh, on a paid vacation forced paid vacation. You only have two possible choices. You go to this vacation, you take it for two weeks without telling anybody in the company, or you leave the company. So it's like uh, not really a choice. Yeah? And uh, he, he wanted to send them on a cruise. He told them, hey, your wives are ready. But these were all, 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 only men uh, on those times. So your wives are ready. They're packing their, uh, their, uh, everything. So yeah, don't tell anybody. If I realize that you told anybody from the company that uh, you're leaving, no, uh, you're fired anyway. So, yeah, just enjoy the best you can. And uh, so they did. Yes, they did. Two weeks on a cruise, no contact with people. And when the condition was that when they come back to, to the company, they do again another meeting. And uh, on this meeting, Again, round table. Henry Ford presented him uh, in a very simple way three different scenarios that happened in their uh, departments. Scenario one, results went up. Scenario two, results maintained, the production maintained the same level, yeah, no, not very big fluctuations. And scenario number three, production went down. Yeah, so it fold. And the first thing he did is to those guys who's uh, department's production went down, he fired them immediately. He told them, guys, I hired you to manage a team, not to be part of the team. And usually, if, when this happens, is because the company, like the, the, the team, didn't know what to do without, uh, without the directors. So they were uh, too deep into the system instead of managing the system. He told them also, I'm sure you're very good people. Like, for example, if this is um, a sales team, I'm sure you're uh, the best sales team, uh, the, the best sales rep uh, in the company. I'm not discussing your ability to sell. Uh, and maybe you even work for me 20 hours per day, like giving everything. But I hire you to be a manager, not to be the best sales uh, rep of, uh, of the team. So this is what happened with the, with, the, with the worst group, let's say. To the guys, to the, to the directors, which uh, departments produced more, he told them, look, Obviously, you know how to build a system, you know how to maintain it, but if the thing grows where you're not in it, within, uh, working on it, something's wrong here. It's, uh, you're the bottleneck, you're being the bottleneck of, uh, of your own team. So, of course, this is not good. And to understand this, maybe you know from somebody, like you've probably seen it in Hollywood movies at least, uh, we're talking about the typical mom and dad who pay uh, the best education for, uh, for their children. And then after that, they don't leave them fly away, let's say. They're always protecting, they're always controlling, so they don't have the opportunity to show themselves. So these directors were not fired, but he told them, okay, uh, tell me what happened after that. Give me an analysis and show me like, what you're going to do to change this stuff. And to the last group, to, to the people whose department like, uh, performed exactly the same, he gave them a bonus. Yeah? Good job, guys. Like, uh, this is how it's supposed to work.
Okay? So why am I explaining this story to you? Uh, because when we're talking about money, and especially how to make more money, uh, for example, you guys are making 10K, 20K, 30K per month. When it comes to how do we make more, how do we multiply this by two, which is very popular, oh, let's scale, let's scale. So the first thing, thing that comes into mind is, uh, okay, so I'm working 40 hours, why not work 80 hours? Yeah? So let's work 80 hours. And usually, uh, especially in this mastermind, Many of us started like freelance marketers, so nobody starts hiring people straight away. So when we start only to delegate is when we cannot work anymore, right? we cannot even live. You know, maybe we're in hospital and we realize something is wrong. Maybe our partners told us, tell us, hey, like, you're working too much. So uh, please do something about it because uh, yeah, like, uh, I, I married you, I'm with you uh, for a reason. So the challenge I propose you is to put a, imagine a deadline, think of a deadline for yourselves. One month, three months, six months, year, it doesn't really matter. But put a condition to, to, to your money goal. The condition is, okay, make this amount of money, but in a way that I can live at any time, I don't have to talk to anybody, like build a system in which the guys know what to do. Yeah? So I can, like, for example, you guys here, Imagine you want to stay in Barcelona for a month. Yeah? So a system that allows you to do this uh, without having any calls. Uh, hey, emergency, we have to put up some fires. We need you for something. Yeah? So this is first thing to, be, to begin this. Now, there is one human quality, one human quality, which will help you the most to achieve this. You all know what it is. We'll talk about this deeply during this session. And uh, yeah, this is by far the most helpful thing. And think about something. In times of Roman Empire, uh, these guys were managing um, up to five, like half a million soldiers. Half a million soldiers, yes? Without Trello, without Asana, without Notion, without WhatsApp, yeah, without internet, without telephone, yeah? And paper was too expensive. Yeah, maybe there were some pigeons flying uh, to, to different places, yeah, but it was mostly human communication. So uh, the, the human quality I propose you is responsibility. Responsibility. Uh, a person asked me uh, a, few, a few weeks ago, like, what do you mean responsibility? I mean responsibility in the full sense of this. Responsibility. So let's take, uh, uh, there's one little detail. Well, it's a big detail, actually, yeah? Because we have to take for granted that the person we hired in the team knows what to do. He is technically capable. He has the right competencies to do the job. Yeah? Because uh, if this is not in place, responsibility doesn't help too much. Still very helpful. Yeah? But if the person knows what to do, if everybody knows their roles yeah, and they have their skills to, to do this, responsibility is the only thing you would need. Yeah? Of course, there will be problems in the business. That's inevitable. But what responsible people do to solve these problems? Ralph, what they would do? Like, there's something you haven't prepared them for, yeah? What would, what would a responsible per, uh, person do? Yeah, you have ideas? No? Johannes? Any idea? Okay, Pateo, go for it. They will find a solution. They will find a solution. Yeah, it's, an, it's, a, it's a pretty simple, yeah? And um, think, for example, uh, of parents. Yeah, any, any parent here, by the way? Okay, yeah, okay. okay, so not, not like, uh, I'm also gonna be a soon parent, but the thing is, uh, rarely people prepare to be parents. It's, a, it's like exceptional cases when people do like uh, as many courses as my, as my wife to, to, to prepare for this. Yeah, it's like a profession, but People are born, billion people are born, and they don't die in their, you know, uh, in, the, in their birth. Um, so the parents manage to, to, to take care of their babies. It's their responsibility. When the baby's crying, they don't go, mm, I'm sorry, I don't understand you. So until you're very clear in your way of communication, I know what to do. Yeah? And uh, even, even if they know that the baby cannot say, cannot say anything, if the baby's crying, crying, what they do is, Okay, let's try this, let's try this, the other one. Ah, it doesn't work, okay, okay, I'm out of options. Let's call the parents, let's call the grandparents, let's call the doctors. 
they try everything. Yes, yeah? so the responsibility is something within every human being. Uh, but it's not always activated. So what we will do is try to activate it in our company with a culture of responsibility. Yeah? Uh, until now, everything clear? Everything clear? Yes? Okay. Before going into culture responsibility, what is a company culture? Because everybody talks about culture, but I think it's sometimes a little bit of a vague concept. Culture, culture this, culture that. I'm going to prepare you something very simple. That culture is uh, the equivalent of a character of a person. Culture is the equivalent of the character of a person. For example, for example, Emmanuel, if I ask you to describe David, yeah, three main traits of David, what would you say? Yeah. Always learning. Honest. Yeah. So this is your character. This is represent uh, representative of, of your character. Same way, if you ask uh, Dominic there, yeah, he will tell you. Uh, probably, would you say exactly these uh, these traits that he described? Maybe something different. Yeah. What would he say? About me. Uh, you know each other, by the way. Maybe like I assume you you work together. Yes, yes. So if I ask you to describe uh, Dave, what would you say? Yes? Yes, yeah. So character. Character is, uh, is yeah, we already talked it. So what builds the character? What's before the character? What's before the character are habits. Habits. So uh, long-term habits are what we call actually character. Yeah. For example, David is this way maybe uh, since the day he can, he can remember, but for example, let's use a different thing. Let's say David started uh, to go to the gym uh, last two months. Yeah? So people wouldn't say David is uh, an athlete because it's something new. Yeah? But if David was uh, doing sports since he's uh, very small, it will be already different. So let's go, let's go a step back, which is how habits are, are built. Yeah? And you know this, uh, of course, repeated actions. Repeated actions. So repeated actions build habit. Habit builds character. Yeah? And we can influence on our own uh, uh, actions the same way we can influence on the actions of the people who work with us. So how is the company culture developed? Yeah? So for example, you already have a company culture, everybody. Even if it's just one person, there is a company culture. And uh, let's use uh, uh, an imaginary scenario. Let's make an absurd example, a little bit exaggerated, just so you see the difference. Imagine you have 100 customer representatives in your company working on the phone. Customer reps, 100. 91, 99 are very helpful, one is useless. They work the same amount of time. And then uh, after a year, we do a feedback. Uh, we ask for feedback to all the customers who've uh, been in touch with, uh, with customer team rep. And we ask, okay, this company, is this a helpful company or a useless company? So what would they say? What would they say? Helpful or useless? Helpful. Helpful, yeah. It's a rhetorical question almost. Uh, the same way, if we're talking about 99 useless people but one helpful, we do the same... Um, Activity, we, do, we ask for feedback, what would they say? It's a helpful team, a helpful company, or a useless company? Useless. useless yeah? So how do we get to that uh, representation? Yeah? We go to the, a lot of actions of our, uh, of our employees. Yeah? So the culture is developed by the action of our employees. If you want to influence our culture, we have to influence people's actions. Yeah? So how do we develop a responsibility culture? Now the million dollar question. Responsibility culture. I propose you principles. I propose you rules. Rules that we are going to present them, that we are going to explain to them. We are going to also make sure that they agree on those principles. And then we're going to follow that they um, play by the rules, let's say. Yeah? And for example, uh, there's a Japanese, well, it's a Japanese thing, they call it Japanese meeting, uh, very straightforward. Uh, these guys, they meet uh, 50 minutes before the day happens, they start working, and they uh, do a follow-up on all these most important principles for the day. Yeah? 
and also they discuss more stuff, but they always have these principles uh, born to, to their souls, let's say. And what you want in your company is that your people, they remember these principles with crystal, uh, crystal clear clarity. But before jumping into, uh, into general principles, there are some very important manager principles, manager responsibility principles. Th this is stuff only for you. You don't talk this uh, with anybody, but uh, your subdirectors. So when you have sub-managers working for you, then you have to explain this to them. Yeah? And some of these concepts may be, well, they usually like a little bit surprising, but uh, it's pretty common sense actually. Let's start with the first one. Every manager deserves his or her employees. First principle, every manager deserves his or her employees. What does it mean? If we have Jordan level players with us, it's because we made it happen. We, if we, they are with us, they are working with us, so they are happy, probably. They could be anywhere else, but they chose to be with us. So it's uh, our, our bonus, yeah? Um, it's thanks to us. Same way if we have a very low performer in our company, it's also thanks to us. Nobody puts a gun to our head and tells us, hey, you have to keep me in your company working. Yeah? So it's, uh, it's something we decide to tolerate. It's a personal choice. Uh, maybe you could say, but Alex, like, uh, HR is very difficult and finding new people, eh, it's hard. But it's still your choice to stop at a specific standard. Okay. Clear, this one? Clear? Okay. Second principle, you can manage anyone, but you should not manage anyone. You could manage anyone, but you should not manage anyone. What does this mean? You could coach anybody, anybody, even people with mental problems. It just takes longer. Five years, 10 years. In theory, you could coach anybody to become as good as you or better than you. Yeah? The thing is, where's the line? Where's the line? So, for example, ideally you have a training program, two weeks, one month, one year, infinite. But if you don't have it, what happens usually is that you realize there is a person who needs help, who needs training, and then you invest into this person, one week, okay, two weeks, okay, still in the, in the learning curve. Maybe one month, two months, three months. You invested so much already that, man, if I have to look for somebody new, like uh, I'm too deep into this person already. Yeah? So it makes it very hard to, to change this. And uh, this is very important because you, know, uh, you should know where to dry, uh, uh, draw the line. Yeah? This is something we can discuss into detail later on. Employees work the way they are managed. Third principles, employees work the way they are managed. Very simple example. Have you, ever, uh, have you ever seen um, an orchestra? Yes, everybody, I guess, yeah? So they play flawless usually, right? There is like, there are some anecdotes and may probably like uh, on YouTube, like uh, uh, a lot of views, maybe somebody like is missing a percussion instrument and it goes uh, to the head of the other person. But other than that, these accidents, um, this is flawless, yeah? Why? Because the director made it so. When they practice, somebody has seen a practice of an orchestra on YouTube maybe? Okay, Petri, John, yeah? So when the director is not getting the sound he wants, he stops everything. He stops everything, he's like, give me this. Now a little bit different, this. Uh, who has seen Whiplash? Whiplash, yeah, the movie Whiplash, yeah? Something very similar. That something doesn't sound right, he stops, boom, boom, boom. And well, this guy, he got very emotional about, uh, about repetition, yeah? But this is the idea. If you don't stop and you continue after something is not performing, well, this is because you tolerate the standard. Yeah? It's, it's something like, okay, let's go with this. You could have stopped it, yeah? But for some reason, you didn't. The last company principle, manager principle. In our company, there will be only two types of employees. Those who perform, by our standards, let's say eight out of 10, seven out of 10, nine out of, nine out of 10. 10 out of 10 is dangerous, and we can talk about it later on. I will explain you why. Um, but, so okay, this is our standard. This is what we want. 
And the other employee, the, the, the only other group of employees, are those who are on their way to, do, to, to achieve this standard. Okay? If somebody is on a 5 out of 10, and he is not rising up, and we're not doing anything about it, it's on us. It's on us. We, are, we, ha we have no right to tell uh, this employee doesn't, that doesn't know how to work. Again, we can teach them, or we cannot, but it's our decision to do so. If we are not going to teach, it's better to find somebody else. Okay? So, four principles. We can go very deep into these ones and uh, look at a lot of uh, more practical examples, yes? But for now, these are uh, the ones we'll see. So, clear until here? Yeah? Okay. So, now let's go to the good stuff. Everybody's responsibility principles. I say everybody's because everybody has to play by these principles. Especially the manager, because if the manager, the person who puts the rules, is not respecting the rules, nobody will follow them. First one, I forgot doesn't exist. That is only I haven't written it down. I forgot does not exist. There is only I haven't written it down. Who has heard I forgot lately in their business? Okay, raise your hands, please. Yeah, it's a classic. It's a classic. So if you get mad at somebody who tells you I forgot, it's a very weak, weak argument. And why? Because uh, whose responsibility is this? Well, my brain, you know, my brain, like, uh, I forget stuff. I don't have a great memory. So can you blame me for not having, like, world-class memory? You cannot, because you also don't have world-class memory. Yeah? So you cannot ask uh, your employee something you, do, you cannot do yourself. Yeah? But the thing is, hey, I understand, I understand. I am also very forgetful. And I have a million stuff in the business. I have to manage myself, my family, 100 employees, you're one of them. So I totally understand this. You see, the thing I do is I write down stuff. I just write it down on my hands, on the mobile, on the paper, on the computer. I have a secretary to do this for me. But not writing down stuff, it's your decision. You decided to not write it down. You decided to, to leave this uh, information into an imperfect machine like our memory. Yeah? So this is something we will be solutioning with this principle. So every, th every time I forgot the peers, we talk about, hey, do you remember the principle actually? Because hey, you, you, you talked about this uh, this morning, right? So you remember it at least, so what's happening here? Yeah? And we can go very deep also into how to communicate this to know so it doesn't sound very harsh because I'm being very, um, very raw. Yeah, but uh, we, we can transform this communication to, to every kind of employee. So who is lacking this one? Who is lacking this principle? Nice, 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 nice. Okay, okay. Oriol, you not? Okay, okay. Second one. There is not, I didn't notice. It doesn't exist. There is only, I didn't follow a checklist. I didn't notice doesn't exist. There is only, I didn't follow a checklist. Okay? For example, there is a landing page, and the landing page has a lot of elements. Yeah. Work gets done, and then we realize a uh, call to action button is not working. And we go to the person responsible, and they're like, oh, I didn't notice. Sorry. Whose fault it is? Is this employee's fault or somebody else's? Well, in, in this answer, again, it's not the employee's fault. The employee is taking responsibility somewhere else. Where? To the human attention span, which is half a second. Somebody uh, told it to be a list. Uh, I, I think it was yesterday. So, Mateo, it's not my fault, man. Like, you see so many stuff, so many monkeys, a lot of colors, uh, women in the world. So, uh, I cannot be in everything. Yeah? The thing is, yes, I'm human. This also happens to me. I get distracted very easily. So, how I deal with this? I just write down stuff. So, if we're talking about the landing page, I have a checklist. Okay, take a look at this. The, part, the pay charges, good speed, okay. Call to action works, okay. Uh, images are uploading, nice. Yeah? And we can take this like uh, to everything, and we should actually. Yeah? We cannot ask any, uh, our employees that they remember everything, that they notice everything, but yes, that they write it down and they, they follow it. They follow it, okay? Third one, uh, this is a classic. This is a classic. And this is a classic not for the, only for the employees, but for ourselves also. Okay, very typical. I don't have time. Okay, but here, I don't have time does not exist. There is only I don't want to prioritize. Okay, so who has heard I don't have time lately? Yeah? Okay, 
So if I told you, you don't have time, okay, okay. Okay, I will give you 10K if you do this for 30 minutes. I will give you 10K if you do this for 30 minutes. What will happen with the time? It will appear. Yeah, like magic. Oh, no time, pula, time. Yeah, so arguing with not having time is very hard because nobody has it. It's a theoretical concept. Yeah? But if, even if you uh, try to argue it logically, it's so like, okay, how, many, how much stuff you want to do in your life? Places to visit, work ideas, this, that. And when you build a huge list of everything you want to do, you realize, okay, if I don't change in a few months or the way I think, this is already, okay, I will need already 10 likes maybe. Yeah? So there is never time. Like, it's an illusion. There is never time to do anything. Uh, what we do is we prioritize. Yeah? So I don't have time means I don't want to prioritize. A little bit more uh, productive conversation here. Uh, Oriol, how are we going with time? By the way, like the real time, how is the clock ticking? Uh, 25 minutes. 25 minutes, nice, okay. So productive conversation. Um, Christina. So uh, an employee comes to Christina and uh, Christina asks the person to do something and they probably like, Oh, okay, Christina. Okay, very important. I see, I see. You see, uh, you told me to do this. You told me to do this. You told me to do this. And I'm doing these three in this order. Now you're telling me to do this new thing. Yeah? So if I put it here, this will delay. If I put it here, yeah, this will be the ideal case. But you, want, you told me you want it uh, on a deadline to which uh, I, I won't make it if I do, uh, if I do this stuff. Yeah? So what do you want me to do with this thing? Yeah? This is a productive conversation. And then she can decide, here, here, or here. Christina can ask, OK, uh, thank you for the analysis. So what do you think? Where would you put this? This is also a productive conversation. A different kind of productive conversation, but a very important one is, again, same scenario. Christina is like, hey, uh, do this, please. And the employee is like, uh, OK, Christina, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and here also this third thing. And then Christina is taking a look at these three tasks, and she's like, OK, but this is bullshit task. So like $1 million depends on this deal. So what's happening? Like, why is not the person realizing this? Yeah, why, why are we having this conversation? So then Christina can do a few things. But first, she's realizing, OK, this person doesn't want, uh, doesn't want to think. But in Spanish, we have a saying, which is give a boat of confidence. Maybe we are wrong. Yeah, maybe, the, uh, uh, maybe our partner or employee knows something we don't. Yeah? So we ask, OK, so you're saying, this is less important than this. Explain. Give it as an argument. Yeah? If the person cannot give an argument, this will only happen once or twice because people hate to be put into evidence of ignorance. They won't repeat this. Yeah? And this way, what will happen is that uh, you will see much less bullshit in the company because people will know that you go into the depths of things. That if they don't do something in a smart way, you will find it out and you will um, yeah, um, just uh, dig out the, the, uh, the stupid stuff, yeah? the not thinking stuff. So you like this one? Yeah, classic? Yeah. Classic? OK, the last one. I don't know does not exist. There is only I don't want to find out. OK, time killer, time killer, patience killer. I don't know does not exist. There is only I don't want to find out. So Mr. Entrepreneurs, what do you do when you don't know something? Google. Google. <laughs> yeah? Google. Mastermind. Go to the mastermind. Yeah? You go to the solution. I don't have the solution. I find it. Yeah? But when we are bombarded with I don't know, it's like, what happens with I don't know? So for example, Davarin, uh, I ask him something. Davarin is like, I don't know. And he sits. He doesn't say anything. And he's looking at me. Well, obviously, the ball is on my side. Because he doesn't know. Yeah? And uh, well, I cannot push Davorin because uh, our roles are very different. Yeah? So that's no problem. But in our company, what we want is, OK, but can't you figure something out? Like, you don't know anything. You know zero. Like, literally nothing, nothing, nothing. And the person, maybe the person goes like, no? And then, you're, OK, OK. And what about this? Yes, I know this. What about this? Yes, I oh, so you know something. Surprise. Yeah, so you, you're a fast learner. Yeah, you didn't know something, now voila, you know. Uh, so what we want in our company is people don't come with I don't know, but with solutions. 
at least to the point where they really cannot know. For example, um, I'm sorry, Mateo, uh, I really don't know your password. Yeah, I tried here, I tried there, I asked this person, that person, your secretary, they don't know it either. So could you give it to me? And then you're like, okay, good job. Yeah, this is a good scenario. A different scenario is Mateo wrote a password to this person uh, a year ago in WhatsApp, and the person is, hey, Mateo, where's the password? Obviously, yeah. He wants to save his time um, uh, by sacrificing Mateo's time. He also didn't write it down when he should have, yeah? but this is a problem. So when you start solving and, and implementing these four principles, things will start to change yeah? because there is no place for bullshit in the company anymore. Yeah? How do you like these principles so far? Yeah? So have you realized there are some monkeys around here? Yeah? One monkey there, one there, one there, a few here. Yeah? What is this monkey stuff? What is monkey stuff? Well, it's one of the greatest tools there is to control that everything is happening uh, in according to the right responsibilities. But before going into the technique, we'll talk about the legend of the monkey. Okay? So, Timo, this is a new one. Mateo, ah, you know this one. No spoilers, please. No spoilers, please. Okay? The legend says, There was a Japanese businessman after the Second World War. This happened in Tokyo. He was taking a stroll in, a, in a, one of the typical black markets. And he saw a friend, a friend with a very curious uh, pet, monkey, monkey on a leash, which he found amusing. So he, he went to the friend, and, he, and they started to talk and uh, yeah, just discuss stuff. And uh, after a few minutes, the friend asks him, hey, man, can you take care of the monkey for a while? I have to go into a place, and they don't allow me to go with the monkey. So he has to stay somewhere. And the, business, the, the Japanese businessman, he was like very amused by the idea. And he's like, yeah, OK, OK, yeah, yeah, uh, leave the monkey with me. And what happened after the monkey lost the owner from their site is that they went bananas. Yeah? They went crazy, like uh, they say in USA, bad shit crazy. They start, the monkey started to jump, to shout, to grab stuff, to, uh, to bite people. It was like very nasty business, very nasty business. And uh, what happened to the businessman is he was in shock. But he wasn't in shock of the monkey. He was in shock of how he took the monkey in, how he accepted responsibility for the monkey. Because when he started to think about it, it's like, well, the least thing you could expect from a monkey is that the monkey behaves, right? So when the problem happened, the problem happened when I said with a happy face, yeah, OK, just give me the monkey. So this was a very big shock for him. And when he went back to the business, uh, he saw monkeys everywhere. Monkeys do not represent people, never. It's not people. Monkeys represent work, work, good work, bad work, Monkeys don't necessarily get a color before they behave badly. We'll discuss about monkey classification. But monkey is the work we take from clients and give to our employees so they take care of the monkeys. It's our responsibility as managers, as directors, to uh, take these monkeys in and to share them with our employees. And our employees are hired to take care of monkeys. Monkeys sometimes sleep, sometimes they behave. But sometimes they go very nasty. Sometimes work gets difficult. Yeah, it's not like if everything was easy, like why would you, why would we pay so much for uh, to do this stuff? Yeah. So this became very popular because he started to uh, to talk about this with uh, with other people, with our business colleagues, and this expanded through uh, through USA also, where it's even more popular than in Japan. Yeah. Until I found about it. So what I'm gonna present you is a classification of uh, monkey situations. Classification of monkey situations. So you can uh, realize which monkey are you taking care of when, is, when this uh, um, exchange is about to happen. Let's go with red monkey. OK, red monkeys. 
these cute little guys here. There is one also there. Red monkeys represent work you delegated with a deadline, but the deadline is about to come. Work is not done. It's not even started. The deadline is already here. Work is not done. Nobody is around. The deadline is passed. Work is not done. Maybe the deadline is today, but it's like a big project. And uh, when we ask our uh, other, the, the person responsible, the team, they're like, yeah, not going to happen for, uh, for this deadline. So it's too little time to do anything about it. Too late. Too late. So we're having a red monkey. For example, if this projector wasn't here, what we will see here is just a red monkey. Yeah? Because somebody is late with their responsibility. Yeah? That's why this guy is here. Who has seen red monkeys lately in your businesses? Has yeah, somebody experienced a red monkey situation? Yeah? Please describe it, Marcel. I think it was like a few weeks ago. Yeah, there was a lot of work, but there was like a really important deadline for, like, I think a Google Ads campaign. Um, there was like a real clear deadline, but nobody advanced, with, nobody like progressed with the, with the work. So the deadline passed and nobody was, was doing the, the work. Classic run monkey. So this one is for you. <laughs> yeah? Timo. How what happened in your case? Uh, it happens quite often. It's like in, you know, every week we meet for all our clients, new creators for Facebook ad campaigns, and it happens all the time that suddenly, like, it's clear that there needs to be three concepts per client every week, and then there's Friday, and it's like, ah, yeah, oh, there's only one. <laughs> okay. Why? <laughs> Typical stuff. Yeah. Typical stuff with a designer, especially. Yeah. yeah. Red monkey. Red monkey here. Yeah. If you want, you can make a collection, but we'll see. You'll see there are more colors. So Davorin, you're about to explain. You, you raise your hand, right? Tell us about your red monkey, please. Yeah, we are trying to establish a sales funnel. Yeah. But we always delay it and delay it and delay it because of daily business. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, not like super red monkey when you decided to delay, delay it, but it could be. It could be. So still here. Yeah. I want, I want yeah. You have a situation. <laughs> you need a situation. Okay. You know, onboarding um, new team members, and what, it, what we do is every every Monday we set goals for the week that we want to achieve. Yeah. And uh, now I was giving them time to kind of you know, um, get used to the work, the way we work. And then on Fridays we review the week and we do, like check in what has been achieved, what hasn't been achieved, and why. What can we do better? And for three weeks in a row it was like, oh, I did not you know meet my goal. And I was like, okay, okay good. Let, let's see how that evolves. And after three weeks, I was like, okay, what are we going to do about it? Right? Well, Lots of red monkeys there. <laughs> Lots of red monkeys. What's the purpose of it? <laughs> yes, yes. I know, like, maybe you should take this one too. Yeah, one for every week. So, so maybe there's another red uh, monkey situation here. Anybody who wants to share? If not, this goes for now to this table. Okay. So, next monkey. Uh, who, who's liking the red monkey? Alex. <laughs> so, what's the main definition of red monkey? Yeah, it's stuff not done when it should be done. Stuff not done when it should be done. Because, OK, if, 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 uh, if you tell me, hey, Alex, this has to be done, and you tell me on Friday, I will be like, um, Marcel, I don't know if I will make it on Friday. Yeah? So I, w I, I won't take this responsibility. Because then if I mess it up, I'm going to be the responsible one. right? So then I have to propose a new one, and I have to respect this one. If I tell you, if I tell you OK, this Friday, and then something happens. I don't know, COVID, bad stuff. It's my responsibility to tell you, uh, Marcel, I had uh, 20 hours for this, yeah, but uh, I cannot do this. But I tell you not on Friday uh, before, uh, one hour before the, the deadline. Yeah, I tell you when I got this. Yeah, I tell you, and not also not uh, Friday morning, not even uh, one day after. It's like, okay, like if this was important, why you let so much uh, time for, for this to happen, right? Mateo? Okay, okay, yeah, so. Story, yeah. We had to send an offer for a house. Yeah. And uh, the engineer who is doing the offers, he said, ah, yes, 
too much to do, but he will send the offer until Friday. And then Friday was over, and Monday was over. Tuesday, I say, oh, where's the offer? Ah, he has too much to do. He had came up. Blah, 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 blah. And, uh, yeah. So two, three weeks later, the offer came, but it was three weeks too late, and the client was said, sorry, man, <laughs> it was too, too late. He found another, another one, yeah? The zoo was already in your house. And it was a yeah. combination with the thing, I don't have time, yeah? So yeah. he didn't prioritize it. and didn't find a solution. Maybe someone else who is doing the offer. Yes, yes. So the thing is, before we get uh, to the solution part with the people who are messing with the monkeys and not taking care of their monkeys, we have to have a monkey conversation. Because if we have just a, um, a solution conversation or we just let it slide, nothing happens. The habit, the pattern will continue. The real problem is not solved. Okay? So, next one. The pink monkey. You see there are three pink monkeys there? Yeah, I'm going to explain you why. They are around the room. These monkeys are usually found not by, it's not like the, the, um, the employee gives you this monkey. Usually the client tells you, hey, there are your monkeys or the monkeys I gave you actually in my house. Yeah? Why are they in my house? You were supposed to be taking good care of them. So what are they? These represent work delegated, work done, but below acceptable standards. Work delegated, work done, on deadline, no problem, but below acceptable standards. Okay, for example, classic example of the landing page, and the call to action is not working. It's just not working. And who is the first one to tell us that something is wrong about campaigns, about the landing page? Who is the first one? The clients, the clients, the clients tell you, hey, this, and then you go and you, okay, who's the monkey is this? It's your monkey, yeah? And then we have, again, the same conversation with the person, where we find who is responsible for the monkey. They, uh, if they tell us, again, the, this classic, I didn't notice, then we, all call, then we, thanks to the principles, we already know how to work with them. We know that it's not a problem of didn't notice. It's a problem, OK, did you have like a double check or something or a checklist? No, OK, like I have to do one for you. Yeah, maybe he thinks that, yes, you should do. We'll see. Yeah? Uh, maybe there is a checklist. As uh, very typical, there are rules. But were you following them? Why not? And you, like, you don't have to be pissed off. You have like a very logical conversation. Yeah? Let pure logic and common sense be the, be the hammer. And it hits very hard, yeah, because they agreed to do something. They agreed that this is their responsibility. Yeah. Uh, examples of pink monkeys. Examples, yeah. Go for it. In our old social media strategy, it's like posts have to be ready at a certain deadline, but then you look at or Melina's looking at, at the posts, and there's some flaws in it, so it's made yeah not in the right way because they didn't prioritize it enough and you see the flaws it's ready but you have to correct it and get feedback and all that stuff very pink punk very pink congratulations for this one <laughs> very pink one yeah if uh, sometimes we don't see pink monkeys why because we don't have standards or they're set in our mind but they are not defined in a very clear way what is a standard? Okay, what is an 8 out of 10 when you give, uh, in terms of a good landing page? You have to decide it. What is a 10 out of 10 on a landing page? What is a 5? Yeah? So then whenever this is below our minimum acceptable standard, below an 8, for example, pink monkey. Okay. Another pink monkey scenario somebody wants to share? Okay, go for it. Yes, yes, absolutely. Congratulations on this one. Yeah, good souvenir here. Opa. Okay. Pink monkey. Who is liking the pink monkey? At least the realization about their existence, because they are everywhere anyway. Yeah. Okay with pink monkeys? Yes. Okay. Let's go with the last one. The most, the most friendly one. They look friendly, right? Green monkey. Who doesn't like green color? And we like it so much 
that uh, we are very usually happy to take care of them. Yeah, but they are still uh, green monkeys. Uh, we're not supposed to take care of them. Uh, we, uh, we gave them to somebody else. What do they represent? These are the biggest time killers of the business. These are the questions and the problems employees give us back, but they could answer or solve on their own. Questions or problems employees give us or they bring us, but we know with a little bit of research, with a little bit of effort, with a little bit of common sense of anything, they could do this. Yeah? A different scenario is, uh, for example, because in our business we won't allow just I don't know. Yeah? We will allow only, I don't know this, so this is what I know. Yeah? And if we don't have this, then this is a green monkey. And it's very easy because we know what they should know. Maybe you can ask a question. For example, an employee asks us a question. And we're like, oh, and uh, you, you know about this? And they're like, yes. OK, then why are you asking me? OK, so oh, green monkey. We have a green monkey conversation. Yeah? And we have the green monkey conversation as many times as it is convenient for us until they remember it. Yeah? And people don't want to be, um, well, first, not everybody likes uh, monkey stuff. Yeah, we'll discuss about how to introduce this monkey stuff. But um, people really don't like to, um, to be put in evidence, again. They don't like to, to so you uh, make them recognize this is uh, something they shouldn't have done. And because of that, sometimes what will happen is they will say, oh, he's a tyrant, he's a very bad boss. Yeah? But we don't want these people in our company. We want people in our company who understand the reason of existence of these rules. For example, in football. Yeah? Here everybody loves football, I guess, or most of the people. Yeah? In football, what you don't see is uh, some of these legends. I don't know it doesn't have to be legends like Mueller or Beckenbauer. Like, it could be anybody. Nobody is discussing, like, hey, a referee, uh, why don't you make three yellow cards this time until the red one comes? Yeah? So, yeah, maybe I pay you something, you know, and you just let, make a blind eye to this, you know? We don't have these conversations. Nobody. It doesn't exist. Yeah? The conversations are about, was this worth a yellow card or not? Yeah? So the conversation will be, is this really a green monkey or is not a green monkey? Yeah, and here we have to uh, give some room for, uh, for, uh, for the employee to, to defend his, uh, his arguments. Because also, most of the times, 80% of the times, it's manager's fault. Yeah, wh whatever is happening is usually manager's fault. We have to differentiate also, very important, errors, mistakes from faults. Error is messy goes, shoots, and misses. Yeah? This is an error. Like even messy is not perfect. This is normal. Um, a fault will be uh, Messi not attacking. Because they're supposed to attack. It's the responsibility, is the role for which we hire them. Yeah? This should be uh, a different, very different conversation. But mistakes, errors are a very different thing. OK, so green monkey scenarios. This is very typical. I, I, I am pretty sure everybody has uh, been asked in two last days a question that, yeah, Mateo? Yeah. A colleague asked me a few weeks ago question I answered him on WhatsApp and then uh, a few days ago he asked, asked me again the same question <laughs> and then I, got, I went to WhatsApp and just replied on the question three weeks ago said uh, oh. yeah he got the idea he got this yeah, indirect yeah, idea forgot, yeah, yeah. <laughs> green monkey more green monkeys yeah Marcela right so I have this uh, program in Ella page and then uh, the freelancer that is doing whole technical stuff, he said to me, I told him, like, you know, from the first boot camp, hey, please just unable the invoicing numbers so that uh, the invoicing numbers don't get triggered because everybody's yes. back. And then I said that, and he doesn't do it, and I don't realize that, which is my mistake. And then he continues triggering the numbers, and I'm like, I, I mean, this is so important, I told you to do it, please. And then, you know, the next boot camp comes about, and it's not done. So it's not only his fault, but also my thing, right? I am not in the on, on the topic as much as I should do. So that was kind of a little bit of fun. Yeah, he did. Uh, this is a very interesting thing we can talk about later. But did he ask uh, a question to you? Then yeah. did you know the you need answer? I should would do it, and then it never it never got done. Okay, this is more of a red monkey. Okay. This yeah. is a red monkey. <laughs> yes. So two more tries for uh, to win this beautiful prize. Yeah, of Christina. 
Yes. Um, and then she asked me something that I didn't have the answer either. So I went on YouTube, I looked for the, <laughs> and I sent her the video. Uh, and I, I saw, I told her like, this is something that you could do next time before asking me, try to search on Google and then. Yes, yes, but probably this person <laughs> thinks that checking stuff on YouTube is a superhuman skill only you have. <laughs> yeah. So guys, these are the monkeys, these are the methods. There's tons, tons, tons of more methods, more stuff, very interesting stuff. So where is this click stung thing here? Yeah. Very happy to discuss with you people problems, which are my specialty in this uh, executive coaching stuff. Yeah. So thank you for listening. Yeah. Keep seeing you around. <laughs>